let's begin. Now, the reason for starting with the website is firstly, who are SciCon? Now, hopefully some of you may have, may have heard of us, you might even be using some of our solutions already. But for those of you who haven't, we are uh, described by Sage as an ISV or an independent software vendor. Essentially, we are accredited to create add-ons for the Sage 200 solution. Now, as a business, SciCon have been doing this for an excess of 20 years, only developing for Sage, and, and the Sage 200 system. So on our landing page here, the SciCon.co.uk, all of these add-ons are developed for Sage 200 and available in, in, a, in a guise. Now, CRM, as Richard said, is, is uh, one of our newest solutions, but it is off the back of something called Task and Contacts. And if if you uh, ever meet our managing director, Richard Youngman, he'll, he'll regale you with the story of, uh, he basically got sick and tired of trying to explain to people what task and contacts was. As he explained it, they go, oh, CRM. He's like, no, 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 it's not CRM. They said, eventually we bowed to peer pressure and thought, actually, we might as well create a CRM solution. Now, for a lot of customers, um, the challenges are, they'll think they don't need CRM. Um, and they'll go, oh, you know, our salespeople don't need to, don't necessarily need to utilize that. But actually CRM is not just, not just sales. I mean, we use um, internally for handling cases and projects and, and as such as well. So it can be utilized in a lot of areas. One of the challenges with it is unless you know what you're looking to achieve from it, well, Sage, Sage uh, CRM, it's a fantastic utility. You do need to spend time to configure it and it is, it can be heavily bespoke and that's fantastic. But for a lot of customers, they just want something that's off the shelf, a little bit of configuration and away you go. So as I mentioned, it started with tasks and contacts and that really underpins the, uh, the, the key elements of this. So being able to set tasks, not just uh, you know in terms of your own task list, but being able to link them to sales orders and as such, but actually inside of Sage through to managing your opportunities and um, uh, and, and as such as well. So we'll, we'll talk and we'll show all those elements. Now, you'll hear this beeping, you'll keep seeing this in the pot, bottom corner. What I've actually got on screen is a copy of Sage 200. I will be showing you the web app as well. I will be swapping to another screen to show you what the portal is. Um, but firstly, just to begin is actually, as I've logged into Sage, it's popping up with reminders similar to Outlook as well. And that's really the, sort of the premise. So there are three types of user available. You've got a basic, an intermediate, and an advanced. So a basic user uh, is predominantly tasks and contacts. Now, if I'm inside of Sage, I'll be able to record those tasks in Sage 200, but I will also be able to access the web portal and the mobile app. If I'm not a Sage 200 user, I can, in providing I've got an appropriate license, I could see my tasks and contacts via the web portal or the mobile app. But what we're actually using is API technology. Um, so uh, an API is a web connector to Sage. So all the data is held in the Sage database with the app from a live link and the portal just looking at that information. The intermediate then adds in opportunities and cases, and then the advanced will be things like uh, integration to MailChimp for marketing campaigns as well. So as I mentioned at the moment, it's very much in its evolving uh, sense. So we're doing uh, all of the core work in Sage, which is where we'll begin with the uh, with the mobile app and the uh, the web portal following suit. So I'm actually going to just snooze all of those reminders. Uh, it's always a good way of keeping me on track as well, but that should pop up again in about 30 minutes time. So from a Sage perspective, we can see Sarcon CRM is installed in Sage, and these are all the various options that we have. Now, first things first, we'll need to set up some users. So you've got a maintain employees screen here. Now, because I've got all of our other add-ons in, there's a lot more information in here, uh, which links to our projects and manufacturing, etc. But from a CRM perspective, I've selected myself as Steve. Down here, I've got my username and then what password I would have set to be able to log into the mobile app and the, uh, the web portal. You can see this user is also linked to my Sage 200 user, so I can access all three. From a CRM tab perspective, at the moment, my licensing is I'm using an intermediate license. So what you would do is you, you can mix and match them. So you could buy a certain amount of basic, a certain amount of intermediate, and all you do is you link those to a user which then consumes one of those named licenses. 
from a territory's perspective, uh, especially from opportunities for salespeople, we can define our territories and then link that to that person, which would restrict then uh, if you've got the uh, territory. So, for example, Northwest set up against your, your uh, contacts would restrict what I'd be able to see. This is an interesting one. So because it's fully integrated with Sage, as you'll see at the moment, what do we want to happen? Do we want these users, if I edit, for example, a delivery address, do we want that to then update Sage? So what we've done based on feedback is uh, some customers, yeah, let them do it. Others are, whoa, 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 not a chance. That's, uh, that's uh, sales, we don't trust them. So um, again, for each user, you can edit, uh, you can turn this on. So any, are any of my changes just held uh, sort of separately or will it update uh, the sales ledger, for example? In terms of sales targets, so we can set the target, what was the target in the previous year, but also future targets as well uh, to again to appear on uh, dashboards and as such as we develop them. Second part then we'd have would be your teams. So being able to put them into, into teams uh, and your CRM employees there. So again, for example, you might have um, uh, account management team, you might have um, a new business sales team. So being able to look at a team dashboard and just see the statistics for that, uh, that particular team, and you put your employee into it. So one of the features and functionality. So we'll actually start with contacts. And what we've got is a company and a person search. But what you'll see is all of the data is, is very four, di four dimensional in that it's going to be uh, hinging together. So if I go to company search, and what we've looked to do as well is optimize Sage as much as possible. So we've got a customer um, at the moment, it's, it's an EBS customer who've uh, recently implemented this. They've got 130,000 records, company records on their system uh, with similar number of people. And I kid you not, once it was uh, it migrated, the data took a bit of time, it does load very, very quickly. So that's one of the key elements. So if I do a company search, in fact, I don't need to do that, let's search for Abbey Retail, but if I was to just search for retail to come find, hopefully there you can see uh, just how quickly that is happening. Now, if I go in and edit the record here, what that's doing now is this is showing us the Abbey Retail um, company record itself. So first things first, you've got the summary. You can add in some summary notes, about 30 second summary, anything that's pertinent when you first come into there. And we can see the uh, primary address details. But the most important bit is this is in the Sage database. And I know I keep repeating that is you're not duplicating information. You've got one version of the truth. Now, as we go through, we've got uh, the company name and we can see that's actually linked to a sales ledger. Uh, I think that'd be retail. Yeah, they are a customer sales ledger account. Now, in terms of customer types, we have a number of different ones. Uh, you've got your customer and supplier, so sales ledger, purchase ledger, makes sense. We've also got the uh, customer types that we add the box of prospect customer, prospect supplier. So again, the company I was talking about with 130,000 records, they'll have a lot of suppliers contacting them. So they want to record it. They're not working with them, but it's good just to have that. You know, it might be an area they go in, so they've got a list of managing those. And then for us, um, so selfishly, we're utilising this internally. So we've 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 uh, added some of our own bespoke uh, sort of in-house there, an end user. So should you onboard this, technically you're not a Cycon customer, a direct Cycon customer, because we we uh, sell via the EBS company, so it's a three-way relationship. So our customer would be EBS. You'd be recorded as an end user. In terms of sources, territories, any of these drop downs, again, they use a configurable in the menu structure itself as well. You can record your account manager, and we've also got an internal admin uh, element as well. As we go through addresses, you can have multiple company addresses there. And as I edit, we can, we can tweak those. We've also um, added in some search functionality with a third party add-on called Locate. So we've written all the links to the API, what you would do is you would register with them and uh, it's a postcode lookup so you can as you start to type in you could search for uh, search for cycle click on that and it would um, or whatever the name of it it will give you the address list and validates that and fills in the information uh, i think they charge a per a search basis but it is you know it's pennies contact you've got your key business contact details then we've got our people and if i for example if i selected uh, peers or Ian Mowbray, and I go and edit, this is where I was talking about the four dimensional. So now what we're starting to see is Ian's record 
and then being able to see what, what his main address is of where he works, what, um, what company he works for as well. So again, we've then got the concept of tasks and opportunities against a user, but they're also then recorded against the company as well. And I'll touch on that shortly. There's an account tab, if I um, maximize this, again, just being able to see some pertinent information. So because again, we're in the same database, we can view all of the uh, turnover details. It's just looking at views of different tables. So what was the turnover by year? And if we keep an eye on the graphical representation over there, we can start to see the turnover by period, but also kind of the overall for, for the years. On the right hand side, we can start to see the sales orders within that given period as well, even being able to drill down, providing of course we've got access in stage to those sales orders to be able to actually view that order. And if you're, for example, selling stock items, being able to see the individual stock item codes as well. And because we've got access to that data, as we start to work with the and develop the marketing side of things, so we use MailChimp, which is where we're going to be focusing first. You know, again, questions from existing uh, customers already uh, adding to the roadmap will be things like, could we could we filter campaigns by you know certain product types? Again, it's going to be far easier because we've got just a single database view. So as we go through, we've got tasks now. Tasks, and this is the key, but it's not just. Um, I mean, I'm sure we've all got our own to-do list. I use uh, different uh, different task solutions, you know, across my multitude of devices. Anybody who knows me, uh, I've always got a piece of uh, piece of tech, whether it's an iPad or whatever it is, and I'm always looking to um, uh, revamp. What this is doing though is it's bringing that together. So it can just be a task that I set myself, but actually being able to, and again, as you'll see, being able to set a task against a sales ledger invoice, for example, or, or sales order, so that I need to follow up. And this again starts to give it a lot more, lot more um, information. So rather than have email pop up reminders or have to set it in Outlook, you can set it inside of the system. And if I just edit, for example, this task, now they're red because they're overdue, being able to see a summary of, uh, for example, this one, is the order still coming in this month? So uh, that's actually linked to an opportunity and I could open up the opportunity there. But being able to say set again, you can see here that uh, 4D element there where it's linked to, to the person which assigned employee. So actually, perhaps I work part time. I could start to assign some tasks. We need to follow up with this supplier uh, and I could assign it for, for Richard, for example. Start start time uh, and end time. So again, sort of roughly in the day when we want to handle that and where your reminder is. So again, being able to set it just as you would with, with Outlook. So an hour before, uh, for example, to, to pop up. Um, again, with your tasks, just adding memos, so notes. Um, and we've got this create follow-up, which I'll again talk about a little bit later. So being able to see the sequence. So I need to uh, set a task to speak to the customer. Actually, they've said, can you send a quote? So create a follow-up task, which will be to uh, create the quote, but I can see what the previous previous tasks were as I complete them. Communication is quite key. Now, again, different uh, different elements of feedback. Uh, we've taken that on board. What we've decided to do, because a lot of people say, oh, does it integrate fully with Office 365? So all of our emails are gonna be in there. Sounds great in principle, but in reality, um, you end up with a lot of rubbish inside of your CRM. So the emails to your to your wife or partner, it could be you know uh, emails in, it just all flows through. So rather than um, rather than do that, what we've actually uh, done is, and if I just open up Outlook, for example, and I've got uh, an example email, it's just very simply being able to just drag and drop your emails. I've got some security conditions. Let's just allow that for a moment. <laughs> there you go. The security is not going to let me. That's the joys of live demo. But as I drag that in, being able to then store that attachment, and what it does is it will store it as a um, whether it's, it's an outbound or in, and it will recognise. Uh, so if, for example, it was to Ian, it would say, well, it was to Ian from me. So it's an outbound one. But also being able to, if you've got your email details set up, pull through communication templates and actually send emails out from within there as well to store those. You've got attachments, as you think, so perhaps it could be meeting notes. Um, it could be uh, if it was a task for, uh, I don't know, 
credit uh, credit control. So you know, just a PDF copy of uh, of the um, report that you've run for the outstanding accounts. Obviously, I'm trying to clutch at examples, so you can store those. If you've got Cycon documents, you'll notice the Cycon document buttons are there as well. You can actually store and scan and attach those that way. Tracking, so you can add tracking notes in there. So quick telephone call, follow up, uh, again, just recording all of those details. My personal opinion on CRM um, and uh, I appreciate it's easier said than done, especially when, when, when you're busy. But, you know, those pertinent communications, I should be able to pick up a record here and very quickly understand where we are with an opportunity, for example, and um, be able to speak with that customer, find the uh, meeting notes. So again, I've had a phone call, I've tried to give them a call. You know, I don't, don't know how often you get it. Customer says, I phoned in four times, nobody's, nobody's called back. Actually, you look at CRM and you say, well, Steve's left two voicemails for you. Now, somewhere along the lines, you're not calling anybody a liar, of course, but somewhere along the lines, there's a, there's a truth in there. And then finally, most important, you'll see this all the way through change history. As elements are changed, who made the change and the date and time, uh, date and time stamp of that particular change. So let's keep going through. Now, cases. Um, our definition of a case would be uh, perhaps not necessarily support cases, although, you know, you could, but it's, 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 um, originally it was utilized for non-conformity. So for us, we're ISO 9001 uh, accredited. So we have to record any, any sort of minor non-conformities. Uh, feedback from our manufacturing customers would be the same. So being able to schedule a case for somebody to do something. But again, it could, could well be, you know, however you want to utilize that. You've got your different case types. So is it a general inquiry that we need to follow up? What's our SLA for that? And it's just an area to be able to record and hold those. Opportunities is going to be key, but I will come back to that shortly. But again, we can see any of those opportunities against that company. Again, the communications tab, we've already been through that, the attachments and memos. Very simple GDPR, have they opted out of marketing? So being able to uh, store that. Linked companies, uh, again, multi-use. It might be that you're working with a consultant who works across multiple companies or they're part of a group. So uh, it could be a franchise. Uh, so what are the linked companies as well? Again, we've got, we've added in a sales order list. So within this view, being able to uh, list all of those sales orders for this particular customer as well. Uh, just in a view that uh, inside of Sage, you know, that the, you like. Contracts, uh, ignore that, that's only for customers who've got the Cycon contracts module in there. Uh, again, that's been added in for us. We use that for um, for billing, billing the, uh, the annual maintenance. So it's important for us to be able to see what contracts um, EBS have got for Cycon for their customers and what are the renewal dates if there are any queries as well. So that's the details that we're holding against the company record. And obviously we've seen the details that we're holding against the, uh, the employee record as well. As we go down, let's have a quick look at opportunities. Now, just before I do that, if I come in, normally save this to the end, but I thought I'd just jump in now so I can see my own sort of my CRM. And this is probably the view that I would, if I was inside of Sage, I'd be using. So on the right hand side, I can see my current opportunities and the value uh, by month and uh, what we will be adding in there uh, will be uh, the, the, the target line. So being able to see you know, how am I doing against my particular target. We can see my opportunities and the details for those there that are linked to myself as well as then my tasks. And I said these are red because they're, they're overdue. And again, the status by, by the various different stages of the tasks. But there is a team CRM dashboard. So as we mentioned, being able to serve myself as, a, as, a, as a, um, a team leader, wanting to see what's the overall view of my team against the team target. And there are views there, which we'll be adding in for credit control, quality, et cetera. Now, from an opportunity perspective, if I just edit this first one, I can see a summary of the details, perhaps a description where you could put your meeting notes as you go through. We've got the details. So as I expand this here, so being able to see which company it's linked to, who's my key contact, uh, who the salesperson uh, dealing with that opportunity is, and again, their team, what stage are we at? And you have probability as well as probability against the classification. 
So again, what you can do is you can do weighted forecasts. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but you can have a weighted forecast just against the classification. So it's going to take the opportunity value and it will be uh, then applying 70% to give you a forecast. But you can double up. You could just have against the stage or you could do both, both, both as well. So, uh, for example, um, many years ago, in an enterprise company, I was in a commercial role, sat in the sales meeting because I had to forecast back out to the city, and I saw a six-figure deal, which of course jumped out, and it was due to come in this month. And I thought, oh, that's going to be interesting for the uh, for the board of directors, and uh, said, tell me about it. And uh, they said, yep, yeah, really, really exciting opportunity. Uh, I've got a meeting with them on the uh, 27th. I said, oh, OK, so is that to close it? No, no, it's the first demo. And you're forecasting to close a six figure dim deal on the, on the 28th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the optimism, but knowing that it was a typically a 12 month cycle from that first date, um, it's not going to come in. If you had the weighted forecast and uh, first meeting was probability of 10 percent and I've got it as hot, of course, it's going to multiply those together to give me a more realistic forecast value when I'm looking at the overall. Again, you don't have to use that. And these classifications and the stages, you're in total control being able to set them up in the maintenance. You've got an order date and an invoice date. Now we separate the two out because again, a lot of customers, um, it's great the orders come in, but you might not see the, uh, you know, from a cash flow perspective, might not see the, the revenue for, for several months. And again, depending on how you uh, how you invoice that. And then your outcome. And this is an interesting one as well for, for tenders, so for, for customers who, or for companies who may well, um, you'll have one opportunity, but there might be several tenders out there for that, or people asking for, for tender quotes, being able to record those tenders here, but link just the one to an opportunity. So you, again, you're not over inflating that. We've got our tasks set up here, so we can see who do I need to call, and it's a phone call. So again, if I just edit, edit the, uh, task there, being able to see what is it, it's a phone call, when's it scheduled for, have I sent any emails or anything like that as well. The rest of it all makes sense, we've been through those, but the interesting one then will be quotes and orders. So what we can see here is actually this linking then to sales, uh, to Sage's sales order quotes, as well as sales orders and new pro formers as well. And the key thing here is it's not in there at the moment, but it's planned for the end of the quarter. Uh, touch wood, obviously, uh, with development, you never know, uh, but we will be adding the ability to do quotes uh, and orders of this functionality into the web portal as well. So for your salespeople who aren't accessing Sage, being able to do a lot of what you can do, which I'm showing you here via the web portal as well, is going to be absolutely key. But again, that one version of the truth. But what we've done from a quotation perspective is if I come in and just edit this, it's a bit of a spurious example, but what we've what we've said is this particular customer here, they um, they've asked for a, a quote for espresso machine. So how much will it cost if they buy one? How much will it cost if they buy five? Actually, they've asked as well, how much will it cost if they buy 10? So let's just quickly add, add that in as well. Now you'd have if you had your quantity breaks, I haven't got that set up, but I'm going to I'm going to say to them it will be two hundred and twenty five pounds each if they buy 10 of those. So I'm just going to add that line to my quotation. Let's just close that. So if I save, save this, it then pops up and says, well, OK, in terms of your opportunity value, do you want to include all of those? Well, probably not. They're not going to buy 16 coffee machines. Which ones do I think they're more likely to? Well, actually, I'm just going to reforecast it. I think they're going to go with the 10. So if I save that, would I like to update the opportunity value? Yes, I would. And that has now updated this value with the forecast value as well. And again, we can start to see the details of what's been selected. So again, this will grow and evolve as customers come back with ideas, but it's just trying to join up the dots as much as possible. And more importantly, just down the bottom there, being able to create new tasks, new emails, but also attach your meeting notes using the Cycon documents if that's what you've purchased. So let me just save my opportunity there. As we move down, obviously we saw tasks, being able to create a new task. Now, from a tasks perspective, as I said earlier, that could be just a task, and I just want to set myself a task. That's absolutely fine. Um, I could link a task to a company, but more importantly, if I come into my sales orders, so let's have a look at a, a sales order 
on the system. So what ones have we got? That actually that top one will do. Just amend. Now ignore this pop up in the next one. That's because I've got different add-ons uh, installed. But you'll notice there's a task tab there. Well, actually, let's create a task to follow up. Um, so uh, sales order added need to check when they need the stock as it is ready. That's absolutely fine. So it's already pulled through the details from the customer. Who do I need to contact uh, from again from that uh, sales ledger account? What's the task type? So it's going to be a phone call. Um, it's in progress. And again, I'm sure some of these at some stage will will start to populate uh, automatically from based on the task type. Priority is going to be quite key. And when do I want to call them? I'm actually going to call them tomorrow at 12 o'clock. So it's automatically set a half day. And when do I want a reminder? Give me a reminder 30 minutes before. And again, do I want to do those? If I click on save, I've now got a task against the opportunity. Sorry, against the sales order. If I go to the company. Now I've got a task against the company. If I go to the person, I really get the idea in terms of those tasks. But again, more importantly, if I come back to my dashboard. I see I'm actually there and I just refresh this. There's my new task now sat there. And when we get to the web portal, sorry, the uh, mobile app uh, in a bit, uh, finally I've got it all set up properly. We should see that task in there uh, at the same time. But it's not just sales orders, as I mentioned before. I go to a purchase ledger account. Oops, sorry, I don't want to not amend, uh, not amend, amend account, not the account status. Uh, where is it? And I said, I might not have it switched on in terms of. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't got it switched on, but yeah, being able to set tasks against, uh, against customers. Of course, you would do that there. Uh, even down to, uh, again, just a wide variety of areas where, where, where you need to set a task, we're, we're adding those in. OK, cases, as I mentioned, may or not be for everybody. That's just. Um, Again, different case types, what's the severity? Uh, so, you know, it could be, um, as I mentioned, non conformance. It might be um, we've been sent, you know, this is the fourth time we've, uh, we've had broken stock from a delivery. So, actually, we just need to set a new case for somebody, um, you know, in the, uh, in the operation side of things to have a discussion with, with that person. So, we want to record that, what stage is that at, the severity, and start to set tasks, for example. So those are the basic elements of what we're what we're storing against against the records. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move away from Sage. We're seeing all of that, what we're doing in Sage itself. And I'm going to jump across firstly to the mobile app. So the mobile app itself, I've actually got it on um, my Android barcoding device. So it's available for Android. It's also uh, an iOS uh, app as well. So from the iOS side of things uh, will be on the App Store. Android at the moment is uh, we put them up on the App Center, but we are exploring looking, putting all of our apps onto Google Play as well. But in terms of uh, in terms of the system, being able to search for my companies. So what's doing? It's not offline. So we decided not to go for offline. You do need a live connection, so either 4G or or via the uh, internet. And the reason for that at the moment, again, not saying. We're always going to do that. We've got other apps where we do have offline and you synchronize, but we just thought for in terms of ease and um, just for everybody sort of connected, it makes sense. You know, connectivity, remote, uh, remote connectivity is far, far easier these days. It just makes sense to have a live link. So you're always looking at the live information. And actually what it's doing with the API is it's just pushing and pulling data as it needs to live. It's not, it's not, there's not a large download because we're not offline. It's just pulling the information as I need to view it. So again, as I start to do a company search, if I click on that. You can see that's filtered. Click on Abbey Retail. It's then pulling down all of the information we've got, the primary address, all of those things that we saw earlier. If I look at my opportunities, well, I'll be able to look at those. 
I can look at the addresses if we've got multiple addresses as well. So that's your company. Likewise, if I need to find a person, I can go to my contacts, Ian Mowbray, and I can see the details that we're holding against uh, Ian as well. If I come to my CRM, <laughs> there we go, don't have enough high enough permission to be able to see that. Fantastic in terms of permissions. Uh, but if I look at my opportunities, this is the bit I really like. Now, again, and I'll apologise uh, to any salespersons that are on this session, um, although you may or may not agree with this, but certainly a lot of those that I've worked with, uh, we we aren't the best at admin. You know, it, we're always uh, that's the bit which is last. And unless you make it as simple and easy as possible, you know, we're always making an excuse. Oh, we've got to sell. You know, we're bringing revenue in. So again, what we've tried to do here is is um, give them an app, give them a mobile device. They're out on the road, sat in my car, waiting to go into a meeting. Well, actually, I can update the phone call that I've just had, trying to make it as easy as possible. But also, uh, for example, with my opportunities, this one for January, I can click on the opportunity and I could edit it by clicking the edit in the corner. I could change the status where we are in there. You can actually create a quote in here as well, uh, which will create then a quote in uh, in Sage itself. So we've added the functionality in there at the moment, being able to see those tracking notes. And actually, rather than go in and edit it's a lot of clicks, just being able to click and drag and say, well, that's actually not coming in now until the next January. And again, if moving those and moving them around in terms of the the, uh, the areas and being able to see where I am against my particular target as well. So just presenting that information. For coming to tasks, if you remember the one that I put in earlier, we can see that task that I added in for Friday. I've not had to synchronize, I've not had to press any buttons. It's just there with the summary. And I can see all of those. I can see the tracking and that's where I can create a follow up. Now, what a follow up is if I select, for example, this one from December. So, of course, these are overdue and that's why it keeps popping up, giving me reminders. As I scroll uh, to the bottom there, I can see those details. So it's actually not that one. Might be the email. Yes, there you go. You can see this little icon down here with the one and it means that there's a task after this one. So. And what we've done is rather than close the previous task, you might have a couple of tasks open. So it might be that I've just had a phone call with uh, with Darren. Darren said, Steve, um, we're going to put on a fantastic PsyCon webinar for CRM. Could you send me some dates? But could you also um, could you could you uh, arrange for marketing to to uh, send us some collateral, for example? So that's great. I need to set a task for myself in order to schedule some dates and send uh, Darren over my availability. But actually, I want to create a task, a follow up task for when we've got a date for Tom in the team, for example, to to then uh, send some marketing collateral. So actually, we're going to have two open at the same time and then I can complete them as we go. But we've got the details. So if I want to see that follow up task, I can see that there. So we had if I go back to the previous one, got an email. Is the order still coming in this month? But actually, I'm going to follow that up. As it's coming today, it didn't arrive yesterday. So I'm setting myself a task to follow up that email with a phone call. And then you've got cases again if you've got those permissions. And then finally, those reminders would pop up um, at the appropriate time and I'll be able to see any reminders in that particular area. So again, from the app, being able to see as much information as possible. And that will again will continue to evolve. If we just move away, what I'm actually going to do is now change screens and we're going to jump across to our live um, CRM. So again, I'm going to be careful just in terms of uh, uh, what information I'm going to show, of course. Um, but again, just to show you now, in-house we use pre-release. So we're always a couple of versions ahead of what we've got from a demonstration. So again, you're going to see some of the uh, some of the bits that we've added in to that as well. So let me just stop sharing that particular screen. And let me just share my um, Psycon CRM and hopefully what we can see is sorry, bear with me one sec. there we go what we can see is uh, just Safari so in terms of browsers 
Uh, I'm using it on a, an iMac here today. In uh, that's actually logged in using Safari. Works in Chrome Edge as well in terms of the technologies. So as I've logged in, the first thing I can see in terms of my start the dashboard, I've not got any tasks assigned to myself, so I've not had any. I've not got any cases, and um, because I'm not doing any direct, I haven't got any opportunities. Uh, basically, it makes me look like I don't do a lot, but uh, I'd like to tell you, no, I do. Uh, anyway, first things first, searching for companies now. Not sure how many thousand records we've got, but as I start to just search there, it's bringing back. And again, you can see how quick that has, yeah, that is. It's using um, our sages in a server somewhere, uh, sort of where the data is. This is just connected to our guest Wi-Fi. Oh, sorry, I'm actually connected to the network these days, but um, connected via the API. And as I pick EBS, we can then see the details we've got. So the primary contact. And I can click on there. So we use um, the BT Cloud voice. So I can't because I'm on a Mac. I'm the only one. And uh, as our managing director also says, he's not a big fan of them. But uh, he's able to select that, press a shortcut, and it just phones through the uh, the app uh, straight away from there. Obviously, I could click on there, and that would open up my email. I can see key people, and then down there you've got your contact details. Your, your people as well at, uh, at EBS, and then being able to see cases and opportunities as well. And through there, you know, as we add the account information, we have to see that as well. Being able to search for people. So again, let's have a quick search for, uh, uh, let's go for Tolly. So there's Darren. So if I click on Darren here, what we can see is, um, it's the details, obviously his telephone number. I think I've got Darren's home address, which I'll share it now. I'm sorry, Darren, I haven't. But again, you can see all of those details, which company it's linked to as well, uh, and, and the status. Opportunities, I'll be able to see those. Create a new opportunity, give it a name, fill in the details as well. So I can do that. Likewise, tasks and create new tasks as well and see those, those reminders. So again, the joy of this and thinking, you know, in the current current pandemic, a lot of people working, working from home, um, you know, so not traveling so much. That's that's the one the one point people will say, well, you know, salespeople aren't on the road, but actually they're able to manage their opportunities either through the app or through the portal without needing to give them necessary access to Sage itself. So let me just switch back to a wider piece where we'll just finish off. In terms of the time, we can see there again, my reminders have popped up, so I'll just snooze, snooze all those again. One thing I should have mentioned just down in the bottom corner here, you do have to have Sage open. Now, again, it's great. A lot of the time you're seeing people now with two monitors. Um, so you have Sage on one, you've probably got your emails on the other. But at the bottom there, if I right mouse click on it, I could find a company straight from there. So without having to open up Sage and then I could just search for um, Abby, find the company and view the details there. Again, I can right mouse click, I can put on a new opportunity, those sorts of things, but I can also set to do not disturb. So if you're on a conference a bit like this, I've, I've set my emails and that to do not disturb at the moment. So you're in a, an important meeting, you don't want these pop up reminders, you just set do not disturb that way. So just to summarise, in terms of the commercial side of things, CRM, it's installed in Sage. So it's utilizing um, the Sage database. And so we've added some fields and that into Sage. If you've got an appropriate license, so you would, um, you've got your employee set up there and you'll be purchasing. Again, I've got five, five and five. So we've got 50 users in total. You'll be signing those users to those employees. If I've got access to Sage, then I'm able to utilize the functionality in Sage, use the functionality in the web portal as well as the app. If I haven't got access to Sage, so I'm not a Sage 200 user, then again, it's the same user licenses depending. So intermediate, if it's a salesperson with opportunities, Richard would be able to access this in the web portal as well as the mobile app itself. In terms of functionality, it's covering the core basics. So your basic user is tasks and contacts, so being able to set yourself or your colleagues tasks um, and reminders, as well as being able to see those contact records as well. And from a contacts perspective, 
coming to utilities once this is installed the great bit about that is you click on this button and it will migrate all of your existing sales and purchase ledger uh, contacts straight across into CRM and then of course you can start putting your um, putting your uh, prospects and that on there as well but you can import uh, companies as well so if you've got um, in a spreadsheet in a CSV you know your your prospecting companies again those can be imported with the people as well you've uh, got your intermediate which would then add in opportunity management um, and cases and then as I mentioned before we are going to be adding in then some advanced uh, marketing type functionality for those of you who uh, look at this and think oh, it'd be great but we're going to have to tweak this or can we add workflows uh, we're going to need screens for for those sorts of elements um, it will depend on what that is as to whether or not Richard and the team would recommend Sonicon or actually the full-blown Sage CRM so what I mean by that is in terms of being able to uh, tweak it yourselves well of course you can add in and change the sectors the sources so you can control what's in those drop downs what we've also done for people and companies as well is you've got up to 20 analysis codes which you can tweak give them a name and they could be text drop down uh, date fields etc by doing that if you were to add them in they will naturally flow through and be available in the app and in the web portal as well so that's the plan it's going to flow through so it means you can tweak it and add own fields that you want to capture information without large development there's also an opportunity for inside of sage so not in the mobile or the web app but inside of sage that ebs are able to add some uh, some 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 fields onto the forms in there so using the Sycon toolkit so there is configurability but again with it it's quite quite um quite controlled so if it's to that level fantastic and we're finding a lot of customers yeah it's just being able to record your own fields that's perfect and being able to set them as mandatory that said if it is more bespoke you know you're looking to completely rename things you know add in add in um tabs for holding information about what equipment you've got etc then this wouldn't be the solution it would be the sage but i think it's quite nice now that you've got a couple of uh, couple of options that you can uh, look at so that's what i wanted to cover today uh, I guess it's over to yourselves. I can't see any questions in the chat, Richard. Never know whether that's I've done a fantastic job of uh, covering all the bases <laughs> or actually people are just sat there thinking, what is this guy going on about? But I suppose, yeah, if anybody wants to unmute themselves, ask any questions, use the chat or uh, if not, we'll um, say thank you and bid you adieu. I can say there's also the raise hand option as well if, uh, if you do want to, but uh... It doesn't appear to be anything coming in at the moment, but uh, I mean, what I would say, Richard, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you and Darren um, uh, will be on the same page here. Of course, we've gone through quite vanilla, just all the different areas. Often, uh, you know, every organisation is different. We're more than happy if you like what you see today. Uh, you've got questions, but rather than do it in a format like this, you want a, uh, a one to one uh, demonstration. More than happy if you contact uh, Darren or Richard more than happy to uh, to get that arranged and of course similar similar to this we can then uh, discuss your business as a whole um, so happy to do that brilliant um, stuff I think we've just got one question that's come in I don't know if you can see it uh, hi can sales inject a prospect into sage so in terms of creating I'm, I'm going to read that as as being can they create a new uh, prospect company absolutely so um, I mean, if I show you just in Sage, first off, if and I've got set, Sage, I was going to say it's worth sorry. saying as well. I assume that that's away from the sales ledger, isn't it? If, it? if it's in as a prospect, it is. Yes. So what you're going to do there is you're going to fill in a company name, the company type. So you'd have prospect, customer, or whatever you want to call them. There, you'd fill the details in, as I mentioned before, and your, and your contacts. So you can do that inside of Sage. What you can also do, and I will just share my screen in just a moment. I'll swap back over to the uh there it is i should swap back over to the web form absolutely again create company add the name in company type all those drop downs are mirrored you're not having to set it up in two places it's just automatically flowing through and the status and then you just follow you follow that through save it and it will keep adding the records in likewise if i just get this ready a second 
Shaz has just added to that. It says, is, um, is this a sales ledger customer? So I assume, yeah, if it's a sale, if it's already in there as a sales ledger, then you would have a different status set against that sales ledger, de defining whether they're a customer or a prospect. And obviously you can store notes against them. Obviously, if it's Correct. against a purchase ledger, it would be the uh, would be a supplier. Uh, yes, they would be. Yeah. So you would, um, for example, so uh, my team, so Chris, who you can see on the screen is using this, um, for example, Shaz, if um, if we had a demonstration yourself, Chris would set them up as a new company, but you'd be a prospect company um, and uh, would set the opportunities against those. For us, we link them then to Rich and the team at EBS. So Chris has capability to be able to do that. And then, yeah, and finally, uh, yeah, in terms of the, the app as well, you'll be able to do that, but it's not in there at the moment, but you would be able to do that on the app. Perfect. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, really appreciate everybody's time taking taking that out today and uh, and for your attention. As I said, more than happy to to do uh, uh, a one on one if necessary. And uh, Richard, I'll hand back over to you. But I'll just by saying, everybody, stay safe. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Steve. I think you've pretty much summed it up there. Um, really appreciate you taking the time today, uh, just obviously to demo it. Just to add to it, obviously, if you have got any questions, feel free to contact us, um, you know, myself or Darren or anybody on the sales team at Electronic Business Systems. It is recorded, uh, so I will share out a link to all uh, registered um, contacts and attendees today. Thank you very much.